Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create invoices and transfers on Canix. I'm going to be showing you from the Canix California Sandbox. So this is going to be a California account, but the flow is generally applicable for every state. If you're in a different state, you might notice a difference in the package tag format or some of the tax regulations, but overall it's the same. Okay, so the first thing that you need to know is that there are two main ways of creating invoices in Canix. The first way you can start from active sales orders and you can say create and you can find a customer in here and you find your products in here first. So if you're adding bulk onto a sales order, you can find all your products that say bulk and you can find and add them to your order on here. Let's find some uh, products on here. And then only after adding these items do you add packages to your sales order so that's the first way the second way you can start from your active packages screen and you select the individual packages that you're looking to add specifically and then you can say actions create sales order and this will automatically add the specific packages that you're looking to add onto your sales order onto your sales order so then the question then becomes, when do you use each type of invoicing? And the answer is very simple. You should, any time that you know specifically what packages you want to sell to a customer, you should start from the active packages screen and you could select, you should select those packages first. You should be using the create sales order um, from the active sales orders screen function if you do not know what packages are going to your customer. So some examples of that might be pre-orders where you haven't created those packages yet, but you want to reserve that inventory for your customer. Or if you are selling from a bulk stash and you haven't yet created the specific individual packages that are going to your customer. No way is right or wrong. It's really just a matter of whatever is fastest for you. In this video, I'll be showing you how to do both. And I will start with the first method that I mentioned, starting on sales orders and active and then saying create order. Great, okay, so first step, we wanna find a customer. So this is pulling from your list of current customers. If you want to add a new customer in here, you can say create a new customer and you can search our list of facilities on here and you can create a customer that you want to sell to. Then you'd add the products that you want to sell onto this invoice. So. Let's say that we're selling some bulk on here. So I'm going to just search some bulk products on here. And I'm gonna remove this one. Great, okay, so you might notice that these two products have the price per quantity filled in. And that's because we saved the last price that you sold your product at. Um, this is not prescriptive, so if you wanna sell at a different price this time, you can always change this in here. You might also notice that these two products got added with different unit weights. So we will pre-fill this unit of measurement with whatever this item is defined as. So if you've created an item that's defined as a gram item, then we'll pre-fill this in grams. Again, not prescriptive. If you wanna do this in pounds, uh, totally up to you. Same thing, this pre-filled in pounds because this is a item that's denoted in pounds, but if you wanted to do it in grams, it's up to you. And you'll also notice now that we're selling one pound, we, because we only have 0.6 pounds available, it's highlighted in red. Because we wanna let you do pre-orders, we won't stop you from creating this order, um, but we will alert you, hey, you don't have um, enough available, so be aware of this. Um, great, so we've got our prices in here and I'm just gonna add in the amounts that we're selling as well. Let's say that we're only selling 0.5 pounds. And let's add in a delivery date in here. So that's the last thing we've added the customer, the products and the delivery date. You can also add a sales representative. If you're in California, you can take into account cultivation taxes and excise taxes. And the cultivation taxes will automatically calculate based on the latest rates. So you can see the cultivation tax is subtracted from the total that your buyer owes you. If you don't want to take that into account, you can just put that in here. In payment terms, um, whatever you add in as your payment terms, your due date will automatically increment by that amount. Cool, okay, so we've added all of the main things on this invoice. Now let's say create. 
Now the next step is that we're going to need to add specific packages onto this invoice. We have added the general item types, but we haven't added the packages that are going to this customer. You can say add packages in here. And here you might notice, so I have a package of 66 pounds, but I'm only selling 10 pounds to my customer. So in that case, you would go split package, and you can see that we've done a couple of things here. We've automatically filled in this new package tag for you with the item that you're selling, the total weight of that item, and the pounds of that package. Um, the start tag is automatically pre-filled in here too, along with the package date. So to submit this, you just hit submit and it automatically creates that um, new package for you. For now, well, let's just add on this package so we can see what it looks like. Cool. So I'm now going to add a package onto this section as well. So we can see that we've added packages onto these two items. And that was pretty simple. It's pretty simple to split when you only have two items, but a lot of our customers have invoices with like 40 plus items on them. And splitting each individual package can get pretty tedious. So we added a shortcut in here to allow you to split multiple packages at once. I'm gonna remove these packages and I'm gonna save this invoice to show you how this works. You'll see these three dots in here and you'll see auto allocate packages. You can click on this and this will automatically split the packages by what, um, this will automatically create the packages by the amounts that you've defined in here um, to match the new packages that you're looking for. We're going to pull from the last package that you have in your inventory. So um, the, re the only reason that you should not use this function is if you have a specific package that you're looking to pull from. So we can see here, after we hit auto allocate packages, a couple of things happened. We have the new packages defined in here. So whereas before it just said the package number, now it says 1588 new. And that's because this is a new package that the system has created for you. And same thing with this. Um, you can also see this new package on here. Don't worry, we're not just going to automatically create packages for you um, without you kind of approving them. So you'll see in here this warning symbol and it'll say review new packages. So in here, you'll see the new packages that you've just created and the packages that you've created from. And to actually submit those, you'll hit submit new packages. So there really shouldn't be a time that you are not using auto allocate packages unless you are pulling from a very specific package and you know exactly what package you want to pull from um, and you don't want it to be the first created package in your inventory. But this is a big time saver, so we highly recommend it. Um, great, so now we've got our packages on our order. So now we can actually create this invoice. So we're gonna say create invoice on here. You can add a facility logo on here. Show allocated packages is actually gonna show you the specific packages that you have on your invoice. If you just wanna show the item type, you can unclick this here. And then you can say create invoice. And you're going to see this invoice on here. Um, and because I didn't click allocated packages, you can see that it's just the item types that I've added on here. You can download the invoice. You can also send it via email or copy a link and share this link with your customer. Great, so that's, that's really it. That's how you'd create an invoice in Canix. I am now going to show you how you'd create an invoice from the other way that I mentioned, from the active packages section. And then we'll move on to how you would create a transfer from those invoices. So you can go to packages on here and you can find the specific packages that you're looking for. I'm going to search for a couple of tags that I have in my inventory. Seventeen, nineteen. Great. And now I'm going to say actions, create sales order. So it's going to automatically fill in the packages that I'm looking to sell and pre-fill in the item types that I'm looking to sell as well. 
And you can find your customer in here and add this in here as well. Same thing with your delivery date. So really no change in how you create the order, just how you start. And now let's say create. Great, so in both ways, we've now shown how you'd actually create the sales order. Now I'm gonna move on to how you'd create the transfer. And it's really simple. After you create the invoice, you're gonna see these options at the bottom. Scroll down to the very bottom and hit create transfer. So it's gonna pull open a new tab and a couple of things, well, actually a lot of things just happened here. We pre-filled in the transfer name, the destination facility we pulled from your customer record, the transfer type, we're using the last transport facility that you put on your, um, that you transferred from along with the driver and the vehicle that matches that transport facility. We pre-filled in the Google Maps directions based on the address that you have for both your facility and your customer's facility in addition to the departure and arrival time. And we've added all the packages that you have on your invoice onto this transfer. So after that, it's really simple. You just hit create, and that creates a transfer template in metric. Um, quick reminder that no third-party integrator is allowed to create fully registered transfers in metric yet. So you will need to go into metric and say, um, go to your transfer template section and hit use and then register. And that makes it a fully live transfer. You shouldn't need to do anything else.